What's going on everybody? Brendan here, Dad Planet. Listen, it's almost the end of October and I'm still trying to get caught up from sales for the end of September. So that is what we are going to cover in today's video. Thanks so much for being patient with me, but nine or 10 days at the end of September, I closed very, very strong. I'll go over those last 10, then I'll go over the entire month's worth of sales, 15 more bolos. Super excited to feature them for you, but let's play catch up. All right, let's do this. So 3,700 gross, 2,500 net. My selling cost a little bit higher for this 10 day period, a little bit lower for the overall month though. So for all of September, I did almost 13,000 in gross. But if you look at my selling cost, 26.6, that little three to 4% difference adds up over time. So where I'm usually around 30, 31%, I'm at right around 27% selling cost. So that's selling higher dollar amount items with really low shipping cost. Uh, and you'll see a few of those in this video here. So net sales uh, up from the previous period, my average sales price, $57. I feel good about that. It was a great uh, a great September. So anyway, let's knock this out. Let me know in the, um, in the comments, ladies and gentlemen, if you are noticing that in your thrift stores, and I'm going to mention Goodwill in particular, are, are you seeing a lot of Amazon return items? I feel like they're either buying Amazon return pallets from Amazon directly, or they're getting them for free, like they get the vast majority of their inventory. I'm not really sure how it works on the back end, but are you noticing them? Because I'm seeing a lot of the stores just in my like immediate area. There's a lot of Amazon return items, and this is one of them. So the Arrow Garden, um, hydroponic. This was brand new in the box. It was missing one. It looked like it was missing one. See, like maybe there's a set of uh, herbs here that was missing. Everything else though was included and was brand new. So I, you know, I tested it, ran it through, made sure that it was working properly. And uh, all indications were that it was working properly and it's been, you know, long sold and and we're good on that. So I got uh, full price for this and I paid 20 bucks for it. So 199, they're 376, 50 all in because this went overseas. So that's a pretty hefty price to pay to get that thing across the pond. So that was a good sale. Let me know in the comments. Are you guys noticing a lot of Amazon returns? I'm no, things I'm noticing in my area are the shelves are bare. There's a lot of generic buys that they're getting, like re, uh, the brand Revu or something like that. I see a lot of like just super generic brand new with tags items that are on the shelves and lots of Amazon returns, but I wanna know if you guys are experiencing the same thing uh, or not, so let me know. Um, next one, blow molds. I picked up a set of three of these for $14.99 for all three of them. So what is this, like four or four, $4.50? Holding the, uh, the lamb, worked perfect, decent paint job, and it has a little bit of sand in the bottom, so that made it a little bit heavier to ship. Now, I could have emptied that out, but I just figured I'd rather not. Um, so it's easier for the end user to uh, set it up when they're getting it set up when it arrives. So 1997 TPI Plastics, uh, Shepherd and Lamb Blow Mold. I got 93.49 for this one, and they're 120.32 all in. Again, $4.50 cost for me. Blow mold, molds should always be a no-brainer. Uh, hat tip. Here, pro tip, look for the Tasmanian Devil on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. That blow mold, this uh, one of the certain styles, it gets you almost over $400 if you find that one. So keep your eye for that one specifically, but all blow molds in general, um, especially holiday ones, Christmas ones coming up at the holiday and all that. So next one, I found this at a garage sale for five bucks. Louis, Louisville, Louis, I almost said Louisville. Guys, I know better than that. Um, Louisville Slugger, I will take you through the images because this bat gives the appearance that it's beat up, but it's not. You want to look for waves, you want to look for cracks in the bat. Um, throw a ball up against it if you're really worried about it, but this one was in phenomenal physical condition, even though cosmetically it looks like it's a little bit beat up. So power dome, concentrated velocity. The model number on this bat is CU, uh, excuse me, TPS D3431. M and I sold it for full price in I think under six hours. So I may have undersold this one, but look, I'll take the 80 bucks. 
Um, and their 101 20 all in cost, again, cost me $5 at a garage sale. I can't tell you because there's so many bats that have value and there's so many that don't. You really just have to take it as a case by case basis. And at this garage sale, there were like a few items that looked like they were even worth mentioning. So I just kind of picked this up by luck and luckily it had some um, value. So a very old bat, by the way, I think it's probably 10 to 15 years old. You guys that are big into softball and uh, baseball can call me out on that if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's that old. So keep your eye out for uh, this type of bat. Next one. This is a, um, a choke wrench that I found, and I have the, it's field and stream. It's like a soft uh, shotgun case that I found at the bins. This was tucked into one of the pockets, and I just decided to look it up, and I'm glad I did because if you look, there's no brand on it. It just says, um, uh, see, and I'm not, I don't, cal I think it's cal 12 caliber, so CAL.12, and that's it. There's no other like identifying information on this item, but I looked it up with Google Lens, and it's a Stoger 12 gauge uh, choke wrench. So I already got positive feedback for this again because I'm super late <laughs> in getting my recordings done, but I got full price for it again very, very quickly within maybe um, 12 hours of getting it listed and it hitting my sale. So 30 bucks, they're 37.42 all in. Let's call it 50 cents for me. Next one, Nike Air Max from 2014. Always check the air pockets, um, squeeze test, bend test, all those things when you're uh, when you're sourcing Air Max. And this was another really nice pair. Now you can see here the uppers show wear and they have stains. I ran these through the wash and dried them like I do the vast majority of my shoes, just as a normal practice for me but this didn't matter. And you know what, what I've learned too is don't clean the shoes. I do very little anymore of like wiping midsoles on a small occasion or two. I will do it if it's super necessary and they're really caked up even after having them washed. You notice a lot of trail shoes, you might have to do that. But I don't wash them because I think like sneaker heads, like people that are really gonna buy the shoes, they'll touch it up on their own. They're, let the, let the experts do the cleaning unless you've got like specialized knowledge in cleaning shoes. I certainly don't. So a good pair here, the model and style number is 646909-100. Did I get you a pair of the, let me just, let's take a look at the soles really quick. Here's a picture of the soles just to give you an indication of uh, what still has value. I don't know if I took this for full price. Oh yeah, I got full price for these. $79.99, uh, they're $89.89 all in. It cost me $4.39. Uh, the Cleveland Indians no longer exist. They are now the Cleveland Guardians. This year, 1995, is highly regarded as one of the best, if not the best, uh, baseball seasons in Cleveland Indians history. So there is a, um, there's, it's like double nostalgia because you will not see Chief Wahoo or the Indians anymore. And they won the American League Central in 1995. It was an incredible season for Cleveland baseball. So not surprising that this sold during the time that it sold. I got full price for it. 35 bucks, they're 38.99 all in. Cost me 99 cents. Uh, I like the Cleveland Guardians. I gotta be honest with you. I'm, I'm fr I was born and raised in Cleveland and I'm a Cleveland Indians fan at heart, but I will embrace the Guardian idea. Like it's it's very strange. And I know a lot of people like didn't like it. If you if anybody here from the Ohio area, let me know how you feel about the, um, the name change. Do you hate the Cleveland Guardians? Is it weird? Do you like it? I don't hate it. So I'll be interested to see what it looks like when they put the team on the field, but it's very, very close to the Indians, quite honestly. Uh, and it's a nice representation of the city of Cleveland. So, you know, to me, that's a little bit of a win-win and we will get used to it. We're, uh, we're, we're pretty big sports fans in, uh, in Ohio and especially Cleveland. All right, next one, American Girl. I went to a garage sale. I bought four American Girl dolls for 10 dollars each and then Jocelyn's wood case that I have listed for I think 370 right now so I bought that for 25 and each doll cost me ten dollars this is Kirsten Larson I think you pronounce it Kirsten Kristen Kirsten I think I'm close um, but I got uh, I took an offer for her seventy dollars uh, so they're 85 12 all in at 10 bucks it was a uh, obviously a no-brainer I'm kicking myself because this woman had garbage bags full of of American Girl outfits. And I was like playing dumb on one hand because I was trying to get the best price I could. And it seemed like some of those things were on the price, her uh, outfits were priced on the higher end. I went home and looked a few of them up and I was like, oh, you know what? I should go back. Of course, I never got around to going back and I'm kicking myself because there was probably like a thousand dollars worth of American Girl clothing. So hopefully one of you folks that follows me uh, here locally got a chance to scoop that up because 
<laughs> I missed out on a deal, but I'm really happy that I got the four dollars that I did. So I've sold two. I have two yet to uh, list just because I'm insanely lazy, but that was a good sale. All right. Next one, list high, shoot for the stars. You can kind of fall somewhere in the middle, uh, slightly, slightly lower. That's what I did with this one. Farber Wear, I only bought it because it was like hot pink, and I know people like to uh, color customize their kitchens and, you know, certain rooms like have color themes. So I took a stab at this one and I marked it high, $129.99. It sat for a little while longer. I took a video making sure it worked, um, but I took an offer of $80 for this. So they're $108.23 all in. It cost me $19.99 at, I believe, a Goodwill. I don't remember exactly, but uh, this is another case where for $80, bucks, even on $20, it's still a fantastic return. So I should definitely not be complaining. Model SM, 3R8, 1R5. This should catch everybody's eye. But now you know like kind of the, where the market's been set with uh, Farberware mixers. Everybody knows KitchenAid and, you know, to a smaller extent, maybe some Cuisinart mixers. But here's another one for you. So I thought that was a fun, a fun item, visually pleasing. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, Kelty bags. I usually pick up the most, if not all, of the Kelty bags that I find. The, that are in good condition. This one was in fantastic condition. It's a Kelty Yukon. I think it was a size two. I'll have to look at my description, but as you can see, firm, in good condition, clean interior, and style 2197007. And uh, yeah, size two, external frame backpack, blue. I sold this for fifty dollars and 99 cents they're 115 18 all in after tax and shipping and whatnot and this was either six or seven dollars at uh, a thrift store i don't remember what thrift store so um good sale kelty bags they are a bolo especially uh vintage ones so keep your eye out for those we'll move on to the next one this uh, i had to do a little bit of homework on so it is a free mason walking stick cane it's got a freemason emblem that's called the uh, the tubal cane emblem i'll show it to you here in a second they got two little balls on the interior made out of wood and i it took a while for me to list this because i couldn't really figure out where i wanted it to land i couldn't find anything quite like it but there's the mark right there it's a closer image for you i bought this for five bucks at goodwill it was on a cart so i just picked it up and thought i would take a chance on it it sat in my garage for a little while as i kind of like took the time to look it up and i just settled on 60 dollars. i ended up taking an offer of 50 dollars and 99 cents and the buyer was 64.54 all in after shipping so freemason stuff some of the books like books on the occult i'm not comparing occult books to freemason books um, some people might think that they're similar or that they blend a little bit. I think they're probably two different things, but um, I'm not a member of an occult and I'm not a member of a Mason Lodge, so I can't speak intelligently on either of them. I'm just some dude that plays an eBay or on YouTube, um, but I'm happy to get $51 on it. So keep your eye out for the Freemason symbol. Those, stuff, that, those things are worth looking up for sure. There, you'll see pins that have that uh, logo on it that have some value, so keep your eye out for that. All right. The next one, you guys have heard me talk about the Rug Doctor DCC-1. This is just another one of those pieces. I bought the entire um, cleaner at a garage sale for $50, and I always part them out, and then I th just I throw away the engine because I don't, don't want to deal with it. I don't want to test these. Like I, the, the, Having to test every single item all of the time is annoying, but when you know that there's a lot of resale value, like anywhere from $250 to $300 in just the parts, it just makes more sense to wait a little bit longer and part the thing out. So I sold this one. This was the Dirty Waste Water Tank. Um, very, very clean unit. And I got a uh, full price for it. So they're $42.99, they're $58.22 all in um, after shipping and tax. And again, the whole thing cost me $50. Keep your eye out for it. Uh, people do not like to ship these, so this is a Craigslist and Marketplace thing for you to look up as well. Sometimes they turn up in thrift stores, but um, and I happen to find this one at a garage sale, like I said before. So, Next one, WWE Championship Belt. We're going to have a real issue, and I've said this before, about uh, shipping containers, getting to ports, and getting items into the United States from overseas, manufacturing, supply issues, labor issues. So I'm looking for brand new in the box items way more than I otherwise normally would. And it was for the fourth quarter, so I would do this anyway, but it's just, um, I have my feelers out even more so this year than I have in years past. So brand new belt here. I took an offer on this one of $33.99. So they're $45.94 all in after shipping and tax. It cost me $3.99. 
at a uh, at a goodwill here locally and wwe is like insanely popular so to me this was a no-brainer shipping issues in the united states and globally or not um next one okay so i have this is the like second or third rainbow canister vacuum that i sold this year this is the sed4c canister vacuum fully tested fully videoed which i do for all of these very high dollar amount vacuums and it worked excellent to me. These things are easy to break down and package up and ship and um, video of it working flawlessly. So I got, uh, and I priced this aggressively. I, I took 275 and they are 324.59 all in. You could probably get 350 for this if you were so inclined and you wanted to wait a little bit longer. I felt like I was being a little bit more aggressive on the 275 side. The last one I sold was 300 and the one before that I think was even more than 300. So. Um, came with all of the accessories, worked great. 300, 325, 350, depending. Some I've seen with more attachments get even more than that. So if you're not afraid to break these things down and ship them out, uh, it's a good buy even at 50 bucks. Next one. Now, the reason I have this in here is because I always say buy good brands, brands that people love, even in a condition like what I'm about to show you. So the reason I bought this was I know people buy Carhartt. I sell a lot of it. I sell a lot of it damaged, and this only cost me a buck ninety-nine. So the thrift store that I went to priced it at a buck ninety-nine because of the stains on it. I looked at it and I said, for a buck ninety-nine, I know I can get twenty dollars for this for this zip. They're well made. The person that's purchasing this is going to be out working somewhere outside. They they don't care about a stain. It's going to get destroyed anyway, so it's inevitable. So they're buying this strictly on price. So for 199, I got full price at 19.99. They're 30.78 all in on something that would, you know, cost them $45 or even 60. They're trying to save money. So this was like a bargain buyer who does not care about the cosmetic condition of the item they're not worried about aesthetics so this was um just sort of a lesson for me to reinforce for you folks is just buy, buy good brands even if they have flaws they and just disclose the flaws so again i have on here stains on front and back and structurally excellent which it was and uh, i got the 20 dollars for it so don't be afraid to buy items that have flaws because you're still gonna and you know at a buck 99 it was way well worth it last one the kiss tumbler this was such an odd item so i think i bought it for 3.99 or 4.99 at goodwill i sat on this for a little while and again i shot for the stars because these things are no longer being made anymore the coffee house does not exist anymore um, so I priced it at $2.99 and then uh, someone came along and said, hey, would you take an offer of $2.50? You better believe I'm going to take an offer of $2.50. And that's what I took. So this buyer is $2.77.44 all in, cost me $5. This buyer has over 4,000 feedback. They are a lifer when it comes to buying unique items on eBay. This one was no exception. 15 more in the books. So one of my local thrift stores recently take a look at all of this Lula Row. Are you kidding me? That is unbelievable. Has anyone seen Lula Rich? Let me know in the comments. I haven't seen it. I haven't really shown any interest in it, but if you folks say it's worth watching and uh, maybe I would get a kick out of it, I will certainly take a look. But yeah, somebody, uh, there's a lot of crushed dreams here in, <laughs> in these racks. All right, that's all I got for you. Brendan here, Dad Planet. Please leave a like if you liked what you saw today and then consider subscribing if you are not already a subscriber to the channel. And if you think there's anybody out there that would benefit from this content, please share these videos with them as well. But that is it. That's all I have for you today. We're getting caught up slowly but surely. I'm just enjoying the October weather with the kids. Brendan here, Dad Planet. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.